Um, as you heard, my name is Kenneth B. Morris, Jr., and I am the great, great, great grandson of Frederick Douglass, and I'm also the great, great grandson of Booker T. Washington. Frederick Douglass was born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. He was born on the eastern shore of Maryland to an enslaved person, to an enslaved woman, and to a white man. It was presumed that his enslaver was his father. Never had a pair of pants or shoes until he was about six or seven years old. He used to sleep head first in an old corn sack on cold winter nights with his feet hanging out because that was the only way he could try and keep himself warm. He only saw his mother four or five times his whole life, and that's because she lived on a plantation that was 12 miles away. So in order for her to see her son, she would have to work in the fields picking cotton from sunup to sundown, walk 12 miles in the middle of the night, and then spend just a few precious moments with him until he would fall asleep, and then she would have to walk 12 miles back so she could be back on the plantation by the time the sun came up, because if she wasn't, she was most likely going to face punishment. Now, he did have someone early in his life that showed him some love and nurturing and care, and that was his grandmother, Betsy. Her job on this plantation was to raise the children until they were old enough to really begin their life in manual labor, and that was around five or six. Now, you notice when I talk about Frederick's age, I have to use an age range because he didn't know his birthday. He didn't know when he was born. The only record that mattered to his enslaver was his evaluation on the family's accounting ledger. There was no birth certificates. So when he was about five or six, his grandmother said, we're going to go on a long journey. And that journey was a 12-mile walk to the main plantation, the Y House. Now, if you can imagine, it took a long time. And he's scared. He's clinging to his grandmother's skirt. She's carrying him much of the way when his legs couldn't carry himself. And they would finally make that long journey from the street up the driveway to the house. And Frederick sees this mansion, this plantation home, is bigger than anything he'd ever seen before. And he wandered off just to kind of check out his surroundings and, and to look for something to eat. And when he turned back to look for his grandmother, she was gone. And so you had this boy who, as I said, only saw his mother a handful of times, didn't know who his father was. He had five brothers and sisters that were strangers to him because he had been separated to him. So he truly was an orphan with no family, no home, and no country. But yet, in spite of all of that, through education, and for the young people that are in here this evening, I'm going to keep hammering on the point of the importance of education and literacy, and you will see through the stories of Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington how education equaled liberation, how education equaled emancipation, how education equals freedom, and that is a message that is still as relevant today as it was all of those years ago. Frederick had something happen when he was about eight or nine years old, that he wrote in his first autobiography, The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, which was published in 1845. He wrote in there that there was an instance that happened in my life that he described as divine providence in his favor. And that was he was chosen from among all of the children on the plantation on the eastern shore of Maryland to go to Baltimore to be the house servant for his master's family. Now, the importance of this move was he was leaving in an environment where he wasn't around people that, where he could learn to read and write, but now he was going to be in the big city. He was going to be around free black children. He would be around poor white children. But what happened most importantly when he got there, his slave mistress, Sophia Auld, had never had an enslaved person before. She didn't know that it was illegal to teach him. She was already teaching her young son, Tommy, and alongside Tommy was Frederick Bailey, bright-eyed and eager to learn, and then this was his first act of self-liberation. He asked her to teach him. And out of the kindness of her Christian heart, she began to teach young Fred his ABCs. And that was all he needed was that little spark of light into his mental bondage, into his mental darkness. And the lessons continued for a little while until his master found out about him. And when he found out, he got angry. And he looked at his wife, and he looked at young Frederick, and he said, you cannot teach a slave how to read and write, because if you do, it will unfit him to be a slave. Did you all hear that message? <laughs> you cannot teach a slave how to read and write. It will unfit him to be a slave. He'll be running away with himself. And Frederick looked at his enslaver, and he thought, hmm, if you don't want me to have this, I'm going to do everything in my power to gain it. And he understood right then and there that knowledge is power. That's a message that we hear today. And education would be his pathway to freedom. 